Man takes in a stranger during a storm, but when he sees her face, everything changes forever. It was the kind of storm that makes the world feel smaller, as though everything beyond the walls of my house had vanished into the wind and rain. I was alone in the old, creaky farmhouse, just as I had been for the last three years. Life out here wasn't exactly lonely. It was more like I had made peace with the silence. Or at least, I thought I had. The thunder cracked again, loud enough to rattle the windows, and that's when I heard it. A knock at the door. It startled me, more because I couldn't imagine who would be out in weather like this. No one came by the house anymore. Not since the accident. I hesitated, gripping the edge of the kitchen counter as if I needed to steady myself before opening the door. When the knock came again, more desperate this time, I finally moved. With each step toward the door, something deep inside me stirred. An unease that felt different from the usual quiet tension I lived with. I pulled the door open. The wind pushed against it with a force that sent rain spraying into the hallway. And there, standing on my porch, was a woman, soaked to the bone and shivering like she'd been caught in the storm for hours. Please, she gasped, barely able to catch her breath. Can I come in? Before I could answer, lightning flashed, illuminating her face for just a second. She looked young, no older than thirty, but there was something about her that made my skin prickle. I didn't recognize her, but the familiarity of her features gnawed at me. I nodded, more out of instinct than generosity. Come in. As she stepped inside, dripping water onto the hardwood floor, she mumbled a soft thank you. I could see she was trembling, not just from the cold. The air around her felt charged, like she carried more than just the storm with her. Take off your coat, I said, closing the door. I'll get you a towel. She shrugged off the heavy, waterlogged coat, and as I went to the bathroom to fetch a towel, my mind raced. Who was she? What was she doing out here in the middle of nowhere? When I returned, she was standing awkwardly in the middle of the room, arms wrapped around herself. I handed her the towel, and she nodded, offering me a small, tired smile. Thank you. I'm sorry to show up like this. I got caught in the storm, and my car broke down a few miles back. It's fine, I said though my voice sounded strange to my own ears. I wasn't used to talking to people anymore. It's fine. After watching this video, you might never see our next videos. But if you're subscribed to the channel, congratulations. Be sure to like and comment after watching the video to the end. Your opinion is important to me. She dried her hair with the towel and sat down at the small table in the corner of the kitchen. I felt like I should say something ask if she needed help with her car, or offer her something warm to drink. But the words stuck in my throat. I'm Claire, she said suddenly, as though the silence between us had become too much. I really appreciate you letting me in. I didn't know where else to go. I nodded, unsure of how to respond. There was an edge to her voice, something that made me feel uneasy again. I didn't know her, yet there was this nagging feeling at the back of my mind. Why did she feel so familiar? The storm raged on outside, the wind howling against the windows. Claire's eyes wandered around the room, landing briefly on the few personal items I had left out. An old photo of me with someone I used to know, a few books scattered on the coffee table. Her gaze lingered on the photo, and for a brief moment, I thought I saw her expression change, as if she recognized something. You live here alone? she asked her tone casual, but I could feel the weight behind the question. Yeah, I said, been that way for a while. She didn't push, didn't ask why, but the silence that followed felt heavy. I sat across from her, trying to figure out what it was about her that felt so off. She was just a stranger passing through. I told myself, there was no reason to feel this way, but I couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to this woman than she was letting on. As we sat there, the storm raged on outside, but inside the farmhouse, a different kind of tension was building, one I didn't fully understand yet, but I would soon. The storm carried on through the night, 
pounding the windows like it wanted to tear the whole place apart. Inside, the only sound was the soft ticking of the old clock on the mantel and the occasional creak of wood as the house settled under the weight of the wind. Claire hadn't said much after introducing herself, and I hadn't pushed her for conversation. But there was something growing between us, something I couldn't quite name, yet couldn't ignore. Thank you again, she said quietly, breaking the silence. I really didn't think anyone lived out here. Not many do, I replied, my voice rougher than I intended. It had been a long time since I'd spoken this much to anyone. I prefer it that way. Claire smiled, but it was a faint, distant thing, as if she wasn't really in the room. I can understand that. Sometimes it's easier to disappear than to deal with what's left behind. Her words sent a chill down my spine, colder than the wind outside. There was something in the way she said it, like she knew more about me than she let on. I hadn't told her anything personal. No one knew my story except a few people I'd cut ties with after. Well, after everything fell apart. I watched her carefully. She was drying her hands with the towel, her movements slow and deliberate. I wanted to ask her why she was really out here, what she wasn't telling me. But instead, I forced a half-hearted smile and gestured toward the stove. You hungry? I could make something. Sure, she said, her eyes flicking briefly to mine before glancing away again. Anything warm would be good. I got up and started rummaging through the pantry, pulling out a few cans of soup. It gave me something to do, something to focus on other than the questions swirling in my head. Who was she? Why did I feel this creeping sense of familiarity with her, like I'd seen her before? I couldn't shake it. The feeling had been gnawing at me since she'd stepped through the door. As I stirred the pot of soup, I caught her looking at the photo on the mantel again. The one with me and her. My fiancé, Anna, the woman I'd loved and lost. I felt a knot tighten in my chest. That's your wife? Claire asked, her voice quiet, almost too casual. I hesitated, not sure if I wanted to go down that road. But something in me felt like I couldn't lie. Fiancé, I said, my voice softer now. She passed away. Claire's eyes didn't leave the picture. She leaned forward slightly her brow furrowed, as if she was trying to work something out. I'm sorry. It must have been hard, losing her. I stiffened. Her tone was careful, but there was a strange undercurrent to it, like she wasn't just being polite, like she knew what had happened. I felt a jolt of unease in my gut. I turned back to the stove, stirring the soup with more force than necessary. Yeah, it was. When I brought the bowls of soup to the table, Claire seemed lost in thought. She didn't touch the spoon for a moment, just sat there, staring at the steam rising from the bowl. It wasn't your fault, you know, she said suddenly, her voice low. My heart slammed against my ribs. I froze. What? She looked up at me then, her gaze sharp, piercing. The accident. You couldn't have saved her. The bowl slipped from my hand, clattering onto the table. I stood there my chest tightening with every breath. How do you know about that? Claire didn't flinch. She stared at me calmly, her eyes holding mine with an intensity that felt like it was peeling back layers of my mind. I heard about it. Small town news travels. That was years ago, I said, my voice rough and unsteady. No one talks about it anymore. I remember it, she said and there was a finality in her tone that made my skin crawl. A car accident, wasn't it? Late at night, during a storm, kind of like this one. A sharp memory sliced through me. Flashing headlights, the screech of tires, shattered glass. My hands trembled at the edges of the table as I gripped it, trying to steady myself. How do you know all of this? I demanded, anger flaring in my voice now. Who are you, really? Claire held my gaze, and for the first time since she'd arrived, her composure cracked. Something dark and painful flickered in her eyes. She took a breath, then slowly stood from the table. I didn't want to come here, she said, her voice trembling now. But I had no choice. 
I stared at her, a chill crawling up my spine. What are you talking about? I know you, Ethan, she whispered, her voice breaking. I know what happened that night, more than anyone else, and I've been trying to figure out how to tell you without, without making things worse. My pulse pounded in my ears. I could feel the floor shifting beneath me, the ground that I thought was so solid starting to crack open. I was there, she continued, tears welling in her eyes. That night, the night of the accident, my mind reeled. I couldn't process it. None of this made sense. What do you mean? You couldn't have been. You weren't there. I was, she said, her voice trembling as she took a step closer. I've been carrying this with me for years, Ethan. I've been looking for you, waiting for the right moment, and I never thought it would be like this. My chest tightened with fear, dread, confusion. All of it at once. Who are you? Claire looked at me, her face pale and drawn, and then she said the words that shattered everything I thought I knew. I'm Anna's sister. I felt the world tilt beneath me, the weight of her words crashing down like the storm outside. Anna's sister? No, it wasn't possible. Anna never mentioned having a sister. Never once in all the time we spent together did she talk about family other than her parents, both of whom had passed before we met. You're lying, I said, stepping back, shaking my head as if denying it could somehow make it untrue. Anna didn't have a sister. I would have known. Claire didn't move. She stood there, her eyes pleading but steady. I'm not lying, Ethan. I'm telling you the truth. I was younger than her. Anna didn't talk about me because she couldn't. Our family, it's complicated. There are things you didn't know. I wanted to shout, to throw her out, to demand she leave me alone with this nightmare, but my voice wouldn't come. My mind was spiraling, caught between disbelief and the memories of the worst night of my life. How could she be Anna's sister? If she was telling the truth, how could I not have known? I don't understand, I muttered, feeling the floor sway beneath me. Why didn't she tell me? Why are you here now, after all these years? Claire's face softened, her expression filled with a pain that mirrored my own. She stepped closer, but I backed away, unable to bear her proximity. The storm outside seemed to grow louder, the wind howling in anger, as if echoing the storm inside my own head. She didn't tell you because she was protecting you, Claire said softly, as if every word was a fragile thread she was afraid would snap. Anna kept a lot of things hidden not just from you, but from everyone. You don't know the full story, Ethan. I could feel anger bubbling up inside me now, cutting through the confusion. Then what is the full story, Claire? Why don't you stop talking in riddles and tell me why you're standing in my house, looking like you've been waiting for this moment for years? Her lips trembled, but she didn't break eye contact. I didn't want to find you like this, but I knew one day I'd have to. After Anna died, her voice caught in her throat, and she swallowed hard before continuing. After she died, I couldn't bring myself to face you. I couldn't face what happened that night. I've been running from it ever since, but it's haunted me. It's haunted me the way it's haunted you. I clenched my fists, the memories of that night flashing through my mind like jagged pieces of glass. The screeching tires, the rain pounding on the windshield the scream that still echoed in my nightmares. I don't need you to tell me what happened that night. I was there. I lived it. Anna. My voice broke, and I had to stop for a moment, the grief hitting me all over again. Anna died because I couldn't save her. Claire's face twisted with emotion, and she took a step closer, her eyes welling with tears. No, Ethan, that's not true. You've been blaming yourself for something you had no control over. I've been blaming myself too. My heart pounded in my chest, confusion, anger, and pain swirling in a tangled mess inside me. Blaming yourself? Why? What could you have done? She wiped at her eyes with the back of her hand, her breath shaky as she tried to hold herself together. I should have been there for her. I should have. 
I should have known, but we were estranged. We hadn't spoken in years. Not since we were kids. There was so much between us that you didn't know about. The pieces of the puzzle weren't fitting. It didn't make sense. Claire's presence, her strange familiarity, her knowledge of the accident. It all felt wrong. Like a dream that was too real, too heavy to dismiss. I still don't understand, I said, my voice hoarse. What are you saying? Why are you telling me this now, after all these years? Claire closed her eyes for a moment, steadying herself. When she opened them again, there was a look of determination there, mixed with sorrow. Because I was there that night, Ethan. Not in the car, but I was in town. I was the one Anna was coming to see. The breath left my lungs, like a punch to the gut. I stared at her, my mind reeling, trying to piece together what she was saying. What? She was coming to meet me, Claire said, her voice thick with guilt. We hadn't spoken in years, and I don't know what changed, but she reached out. She said she wanted to make things right, that she needed to see me. She was driving to meet me that night when the accident happened. She wasn't just out for a drive. She was coming for me. The room seemed to shrink around me. I could barely breathe. The image of Anna behind the wheel, her bright eyes glancing over at me moments before the crash. It had played on repeat in my head for years. But this? This was something I hadn't known. Couldn't have known. Why didn't you tell me? I whispered, my voice hollow. Why didn't you come to me after the accident? Claire's face crumpled, and she wiped away fresh tears. I was afraid. I was so scared, Ethan. I blamed myself for her death. I thought if I hadn't pushed her away all those years ago, she wouldn't have been out in the storm. She wouldn't have been on that road. I could feel the cracks in my reality widening. The guilt that had weighed on me for years, the belief that I could have saved her, that I should have done more, was unraveling in the face of this new truth. She hadn't been out there because of me. She had been going to meet a sister I never knew existed. For the first time, I saw Claire not as a stranger, but as someone who had been carrying her own version of hell. She had been running from the same night, the same grief, but in a different way. I didn't know how to face you, she continued, her voice barely above a whisper. I didn't know how to tell you that I was the reason she was on that road. But I had to come now. Ethan, I had to tell you the truth because I can't live with it anymore. We've both been haunted by her death, and I thought, maybe we could finally face it together. I stared at her, my heart pounding in my chest. For the first time in years, the weight on my soul shifted, cracked. It wasn't gone, not by a long shot, but knowing the truth, knowing I wasn't the only one suffering, somehow made it bearable. But could I forgive her? Could I forgive myself? The storm outside thundered on, but inside the house, a strange kind of stillness settled between us, like the calm before something even bigger. The storm had quieted, leaving behind a tense, heavy silence in the house. Claire sat across from me, her tear streaked face pale and exhausted. Her confession hung in the air like a weight neither of us could move. I stared at her my mind a tangle of emotions I couldn't even begin to process. Grief, anger, confusion, and something else I couldn't quite name. For years, I had carried the burden of Anna's death, letting it eat away at me. And now, in the space of one night, everything I thought I knew had been shattered. Claire, Anna's sister, the woman I never knew existed had come into my life and torn open old wounds I'd been trying to keep stitched closed. You think telling me all of this will make it better? My voice was cold, detached. It was easier than feeling the full force of everything. That somehow we can face it together. Like that'll fix things? Claire flinched, but she didn't look away. I didn't come here to fix anything, Ethan. I know I can't undo what happened, but I couldn't carry it alone anymore. I needed you to know the truth. I needed you to know that it wasn't your fault. The words hit me hard, even though part of me wanted to reject them. I had lived with the guilt for so long, letting it define me. If I let it go, 
If I accepted that it wasn't all my fault, then what was I left with? I got up from the table, unable to sit still any longer. I paced the room, my hands clenched into fists, feeling the anger bubbling up again. Why didn't Anna ever tell me about you? Why didn't she say anything about having a sister? Claire's voice was low when she answered. Because I wasn't a part of her life anymore. We grew up in a difficult home. Our parents, they weren't good people, Ethan. They were controlling, manipulative. Anna and I were close once, but she cut ties when she got older. She wanted a fresh start, to be someone new. And that meant leaving me behind. I stopped pacing, turning to look at her. So, you're telling me she just erased you? Claire's eyes filled with fresh tears. She had her reasons. Our family was toxic, and I didn't make it easy for her. I blamed her for leaving me behind, for choosing to build a new life without me. I was angry for a long time, and by the time I wanted to make things right, it was too late. I think that's why she reached out that night, because she finally wanted to heal what was broken between us. I felt a surge of sadness for Anna, for the things she had kept hidden, for the weight she had carried that I never even saw. She had been running from her past, trying to build a new future, and in the end, it had caught up with her in the worst way possible. But now Claire was standing in front of me, asking for forgiveness, for herself, for Anna, for everything. And I didn't know if I had it in me to give. How do I know you're telling me the truth? I asked, my voice quiet now, the anger fading into something more hollow. How do I know this isn't just some story you've made up to ease your own guilt? Claire didn't flinch. She stood there, steady, meeting my gaze with a calm I didn't expect. You don't. You'll just have to trust me. Or don't. But I came here because I couldn't live with the lies anymore. I needed you to know the truth. And what you do with it, that's up to you. The weight of her words settled over me, heavy and suffocating. For so long, I had blamed myself for Anna's death. I had replayed that night over and over, wondering what I could have done differently, how I could have saved her. And now, here was a woman, her sister, telling me that none of it had been in my control, that Anna's fate had been tied to a family secret I never knew existed. I sank into the armchair by the fireplace my body feeling drained of all energy. I stared into the dying embers, my mind spinning. Could I really let go of the guilt that had defined me for so long? Could I forgive Claire for keeping the truth from me all these years? And, more importantly, could I forgive myself? The silence stretched on, thick with the weight of everything unsaid. Claire stood there, watching me, waiting. I could feel her grief, her guilt, mirroring my own. I don't know if I can do this. I finally whispered, my voice cracking. I don't know how to just let go. Claire walked over slowly, her footsteps soft on the wooden floor. She knelt down beside the armchair, her eyes shining with unshed tears. You don't have to do it all at once. We can take it one step at a time. But you don't have to carry it alone anymore, Ethan. Neither of us does. Her words hung in the air, and for the first time, I felt a flicker of something I hadn't felt in years. Hope. It was faint, barely a whisper, but it was there. I looked at Claire, really looked at her, and saw the pain she had been carrying, the weight of the same night that had broken both of us in different ways. She wasn't the enemy. She wasn't here to hurt me. She was just as lost as I was, just as broken. Maybe. Just maybe, we could find a way to heal together. I don't know if I can forgive you, I said, my voice hoarse. Not yet. She nodded, her face etched with understanding. That's okay. I'm not asking for that. I'm just asking for a chance. The storm outside had faded to a gentle drizzle, the wind no longer howling but whispering through the trees. Inside, the fire crackled softly its warmth spreading through the room. And in that moment, something shifted inside me. The weight I had carried for so long didn't disappear, but it lightened, just a little. Stay, I said quietly. For tonight, at least. Claire nodded, 
her eyes filled with a gratitude that made my chest ache. She stood up, her movements slow and careful, as if she was afraid of shattering the fragile peace between us. I watched her as she moved toward the couch, settling in for the night. The storm outside had passed, but the storm between us was just beginning to calm. And as I closed my eyes, I realized that maybe, just maybe, this was the start of something new.